In this video, what is white tea and how aging affects its taste. By the end of this video, you will be able to recognize white tea and also, in particular, to tell it apart from all those fake white tea that are out there on the market. So, keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan and today I am in New York City with Elsa. Hello! And today we are going to drink together white tea and in particular to find out which is the difference between fresh white tea and aged white tea. And for those of you that are also interested in brewing white tea at home, you have to wait until the end of the video because we will give three tips to brew white tea to perfection. All right, so and uh, what should we also say? We should also say that if you're new to our channel and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click on the subscribe button because the more subscriber we get, the more video you will get. And there are quite a few videos already on the pipeline. So yeah, as if you subscribe, let's say many video will come your, your way very soon. And um, all right, so we have to start with the white tea. What uh, we have here, we have different white tea to taste, but first of all, I wanted to ask you Elsa, uh, which tea do you usually drink? Yeah, so actually not much white tea. Okay. Mostly I go towards uh, either Japanese green teas mm -hmm. or I do also love oolongs quite a bit. I I, I've heard that in Japan there is also a little production of oolong, but I've never heard of white tea. Have you ever? Of white tea out of Japan? I actually no. haven't. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end it's not bad at all that you're not very familiar with white tea, because then we can start from the basics. Yes, Yeah. Great. And for everybody. So what if we, uh, we just are saying, uh, um, first of all, what is actually white tea? So white tea actually is the is a way of processing the tea leaves. So you can do white tea out of every tea plant mm -hmm. if you want to, but over the year, um, some tea plants, some tea varieties uh, have been found to, um, to give the better results with white mm -hmm. tea. And in particular, it was, I would say, from what I remember about two, three centuries ago, that white tea, the way we know it today, was invented in the northern part of Fujian, uh, if you are curious about the name, it is a region in the northern Fujian between the city of uh, or the county of uh, Jenghe and the county of Fuding. It's a stretch of about two, three hundred kilometer, where even nowadays uh, the best white tea in the world are made. And um, what we have to say about white tea is the simplest way of uh, uh, processing the tea leaves. So it's basically three steps. You first, uh, uh, when you harvest the leaves, the first thing you have to do, you have to wither them. So usually they are put on uh, some bamboo baskets. They are spread on some bamboo baskets and let wither in the shadow, inside mm -hmm. or outside, for a few hours so that they lose water content. And then what happens is that uh, they take these bamboos and they bring it outside under the sun or who has a rooftop they would put on the roof and they let them slowly dry at the sun. And this process is, uh, um, is actually very slow. It can take several days until okay. the leaves uh, are completely dry. And you have to take care if it starts raining, then people have to run all the leaves mm. in and then back out. And after that, most of the time, there is a final uh, finishing, a firing. Uh, the very traditional way is to use a bamboo basket. So it's a cylindrical bamboo like that where they put hot hashes inside, forming like a cone, and then they put a cup on it, based, made also of bamboo, with uh, a, a, bit of, a piece of cloth, okay. and then the leaves on top, very spread out. And it stays there for a few hours, mm -hmm. and it's quite hot, and this way you have a firing. There are also other ways, uh, there are people that use uh, uh, oven, or electrical oven even, or sometimes oven that are uh, wooden fired, but the most traditional way is in the basket. So once you have these three pro with these three steps, wittering, sun drying, and firing, you have white tea and you can drink it. Um, what is actually also interesting is uh, sun drying is not the only thing you do. There are some teas that are uh, um, dried in the shadow. And actually there is one oh. in Yunnan that is called uh, Yue Guanbai, that means moonlight shadow, that 
according to tradition, or maybe I should say legend, they say it is dried under moonlight. Oh, wow. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they do it indoor. But uh, um, if you look uh, at this, uh, this picture, you will also see that the leaves are very pale, almost white. They are big, thick uh, tea buds mm -hmm. that uh, resemble a little bit uh, the color of uh, a full moon, mm -hmm. to me at least. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, about uh, what is white tea. And then I would say we should start drinking white right. tea. So we have uh, here for you uh, four different white tea. Let's have a look at them. Uh, and I would say we start with the youngest one, this one here. It is a, um, a pressed white tea. So let's see how it looks like. You can, uh, let's put it here in the middle. I hope you can see. We have already broken uh, this uh, bean chop yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. We have cut it into two, and here it is. And we can uh, take some leaves out of these and just brew them. Mm -hmm. um, this is an option. This tea is from last year, uh, 2018. Uh, we intentionally took uh, one year old and not the super fresh, because very fresh white tea is too grassy. Mm -hmm. So this one is one, then we're, I will show you them all and then uh, I think you will choose the okay. one we will drink. Then we have um, this tea here. This is a, um, that tea here is a, a show made. So it is a, um, a little bit, um, it's only leaves, it's no buds. And this is the opposite, it's only mm -hmm. buds and no leaves. There you go. So you see that there is uh, like uh, some white hair. Yeah, yeah this is the, a peculiarity of this particular cultivar. And it says that uh, it helps protecting uh, the leaves when they are so young from the insects, basically. So this team, I would still consider it fresh, but it's five years old. Okay. The difference with the previous one is that this one is always sealed, so it doesn't have, it's not in contact with air, but that one is wrapped in paper. Mm. So it ages much uh, faster, but you see that also from the color is still very um, greenish, yeah. So it's still a fresh one. Can I give sure, you this? Yeah, Thank you. That. And then I take the next one. This one is also very interesting. Uh, thank you, because uh, it comes actually in a chocolate box ah. and. Um, I like chocolate and I like white tea, so my, <laughs> my, white, tea, my white tea chocolate is already over almost. <laughs> but I still have some pieces to show it to you. Maybe. The other two is, oh, here you see. And actually, here you have just two pieces of chocolate, you see, mm. but it really comes with a 100 gram uh, oh, chocolate bar. And you can just break a piece of chocolate oh, nice. and use it, yeah. Now, mm. which, what do you guess? I mean, this we say that it is, uh, the first one was one year old, the second five years. How old is this one? Just based on color? Yeah, based on color or, or just guessing, you know. Um, ten? So this is six. Okay. It's very close to the other one, but it is wrapped in paper. Mm. So it aged much uh, faster. And in fact, I would consider the taste of this tea already aged. Okay. But uh, can I give it yes, to you? Of course. But it doesn't yet have uh, the aroma typical of the white teas, like I would say in between. Mm. Here we have another one. And this tea is uh, 12 years old. Okay. Okay. So it is uh, spring 2007. We are recording in 2019. If you are in the future. <laughs> and let's see how it looks. This is actually, um, it has both buds and leaves, but the leaves are very small. And this variety, this kind of uh, um, leaf type in combination with white tea is called bimodan which we, means uh, white peony. Mm -hmm. And here you see that it is much darker 
than the previous one and it has a lot of bugs so we definitely we will taste uh, this tea as a reference for um, aged poor okay uh, and I would say you have to pick one of the first two for one of the first one. two yeah. to compare to compare so not the chocolate because that too close to this one yeah is already in transition but either the one uh, from last year or the one uh, which is five years old um, let's do the one which is five okay. years old or last year. It's, what do you no, think? It, it's really the same because both, although it's, you think one year and five years mm, is a lot of yeah. difference, is not because it was sealed. So when it is sealed, it takes much longer mm. to, to age. So it is still very, very fresh in taste. Okay. So also when you look at some white tea, don't only look at the age of the tea, you have to check how it was stored because okay. it makes a big difference right. on that the taste. Sense. Yeah. So we keep this for the future and then it's on your side there yes. and I would say we okay. start with the light one okay yeah so we will uh, boil the water and then we'll prepare the tea okay the water is hot we have the tea here and we can start with uh, the first tea the um, by how in gen and uh, in English usually it is called a silver needle because of this white uh, hair fuzz. yeah mm. it's a, like this fuzz that it has on the on the leaves we just give a rinse to our tea to warm it up and then we steep the tea. So if you, if you have to, to buy white tea and you want to be sure it is white tea, what do you have to look at? Uh, one important thing is that the leaves have to be uh, whole, not broken. Okay. And this is important because uh, we have mentioned before that white tea is sun-dried and during this long drying process the leaf changes, they oxidize. And now if the leaves uh, are broken, there are substances within the leaves that will oxidize as well, affecting the taste. And so maybe... Sorry. Does it have to do with quality of the white tea or then is it, is it no longer considered a white tea? It's uh, both. It's mm -hmm. no longer considered white tea and the quality is lower, yeah. This way you can really, by end of course, you can select only buds, mm -hmm. something that you cannot do when you harvest by machine, but it's also if it is cut. Uh, in this case, when it is the leaves is whole, you basically oxidize mainly the chlorophyll mm -hmm. and not the substances that are inside the, uh, the leaf. So now we warm it up. This is about uh, four grams, no, a bit more, maybe five. Mm. What does this man? Warm, actually. Yeah. Maybe because it's very warm in the sea, in the sea, <laughs> no, no, right, in New York City. It's very hot right now. It's very, very hot here. It does have that almost um, hay-like smell mm -hmm. to it that yeah. we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That what also makes the difference between a green tea and a white tea. A green tea has this fresh grass cut mm -hmm. uh, smell, while a white tea usually goes more in the direction of uh, hay. Except if it is very fresh. If it is within one or two months after the harvest, then it really is like uh, fresh grass. Sometimes even unpleasant because it has this uh, bitterness of fresh vegetables mm -hmm. that is not typical of white tea because usually, especially in Europe, we don't get white tea um, within one month from the right, harvest. Right. Yeah. So this will be a very soft uh, brew. Water is very hot, we brew it uh, at 100 degrees and uh, we can wait a little bit. Another important aspect, so we say the whole leaves, but now of course there are many teas that are whole leaves. If you go for high quality tea, most of them, mm -hmm. right? There is the Chinese one. But uh, there is another very important aspect about white tea. White tea is not bitter. And there are not so many teas that are not mm -hmm. bitter, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here is where it comes. If you're not sure if it is a green or a white tea, if uh, it has a clear bitterness to it, it's most probably a green tea. And unfortunately, in the Western world, in Europe, in America, in the supermarket, often white tea is mixed with green tea 
to make it cheaper because wind is much more available actually mm. to us. So let's try this out. It's still very hot. Yeah. You see also in the color that is uh, um, it is very pale the 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 color of the yeah, it so it is really you see also in that that is not uh, yet aged. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks fresh. Okay, when yeah. it's aged, then the color gets a Will little change, darker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. To me. Maybe because we are in summer, but to me yeah. it tastes summery. Yeah, like it feels like being yeah. in a field. There is also mm, like this, like really delicate, like f almost floral sweetness. To yes, it. there is a, um, maybe it's an association because of the color, but it reminds to me white flowers actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The feeling of white flowers. I don't know how white flowers taste. White yeah, wild but flowers. White flower, but yeah. yeah. We can do a little bit a longer steep and see what comes out of it. <coughs> so I, I will wait here um, at least one minute okay. and see if we get some strength out of it. So we have leave it now for uh, at least a minute, I would mm. say. It is quite some leaves inside and this guy one is not big at all. And in fact, the color is darker. Yeah. It is super hot. It's really boiling water. The water or the brew almost has an apricot. It does. It does. It. It does. We have to wait a little bit, I think, because it's super yeah, hot. Yeah, we burn ourselves. But in the meantime, we can uh, take out the next tea which is the Bimodan from 2007. So it is uh, more than actually slightly more than 12 years old. It was spring 2007. And this is, we say this is a Bimodan, so it has also some leaves. But um, the, um, uh, the quality of this Bimodan is very high. So you have a high quantitative of buds in it. And if you look at the leaves, they are uh, quite small actually, you see. so. Let me try to take one, but if you take like this one here, you see the leaves are almost very small, so it is really picked when only the first two leaves just open and there is still the buds in uh -huh. between, yeah, and they didn't grow yet uh, very much. I try to take more or less the same amount that we took before to have a better comparison. These two things, they come from exactly the same place. So it is in the fooding area that I was mentioning before. It's exactly the same variety of uh, uh, tea plant, which is the fooding da bai hao, um, which means something like uh, fooding is the name of the place, da bai is big white, mm -hmm. and hao means uh, number. I think it's enough like that. Yeah. Okay, let's see yes. how it is the silver needle. Mm. Mm. It definitely has a warmer taste. And to me, mm. this is something I, I was saying also to Elsa before. In, with some white tea, I associate them with bread yeast. Yes. Yeah, yes. We were saying that. And this tea is uh, actually. Um, one of those tea that I even associate more with bread yeast than with hay. Oh, there are, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is a personal feeling. The aftertaste feeling. is actually very that, yeasty. Yeasty, that reminds yeah. you of your mom. So, uh, in my case, it was, my mom was doing bread at home when I was mm. young, and I read this. Uh, uh, I recall in my mind that this uh, the scene when she was making bread on the yeah. table, and the whole room was smelling like bread yeast. And this reminds me just that situation. Mm. And it's not bitter at all, right? So try to put so much leaves of green tea in such a tiny guy one, and uh, brew it for a minute with hundred degrees temperature water. It will be very bitter, even if you are a used, uh, yeah. you know, and someone that uh, is used to drink uh, bitter tea. 
it will be hard. And in this case, I bet uh, no one would ever say that is has mm. some bitterness. Mm. So this is another criteria if you really want to tell green tea and white tea apart. Okay. So what if we change to the other yeah. one to see which are the differences? Great. I just give you the last uh, you. sip of these. There we go. And then we brew the other one. Mm. So I will put now the tea inside. The gallon is still very hot, so we don't tend to warm it up uh, any further. Great. Just remove the tiny buds from the previous one. And let's see how this smells. This tea has been stored at least until 2013 in China. Okay. So in a climate that is very close to what is New York City today, very humid and hot. So it aged quite a lot. And then uh, we brought it to Berlin. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. It's different. Completely different. It's, um, wow. Oh, yeah. The first thing that I, I thought when I smell it um, <clears throat> is uh, um, something burned. I don't know something why. Burned. Burned. Burn. Yeah. It has almost like, um, to me, it made me think of something like almost musky yeah. and animalistic in a way. Yeah. The other is more vegetal and this yeah. is more animal. Yeah. Can we say that? So we'll do again a quick brew and then a little bit longer so that we have a comparison also in similar way of doing the tea, yeah? <clears throat> and let's see what comes out. So we say that uh, the previous one is the Bai Hao Ingen, uh, which is the silver needle, and this mm -hmm. one is Bai Modan, the white peony. I have a Baimudan question. Should I wait yeah, or should I ask it? Go now? ahead. Go ahead. So in my mind, Baimudan is always associated with a lower quality white tea. Okay. Is that accurate or? Um, my favorite white tea between Shomei, Baimudan, and Injen is Baimudan. Ah. If I have to choose okay. one. And uh, um, it's definitely not low quality. So these three <clears throat> are all relatively high quality, are the three best white tea that you can have. There are even lower grades. If you harvest off season, mm -hmm. or you take very large tea and then you cut them and you sell it <clears throat> in tea bags in Europe, for example. Right. <clears throat> Sorry. But the Bimodan actually is the second best. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you have some time a tea that they call. Uh, um, let me think, I think it's Baimodan Wang in uh, Baimodan King, the king of Baimodan. And uh, this could be considered one of those where you have the buds and the leaves around it are very, very small. Mm. But in fact, the, the quality between this Baimodan and the silver needle is not much different, actually. Yeah? Okay. But the Baimodan <clears throat> has a little bit more body, even when it is uh, as the same age. And that's why I like it better. Okay. But I have to say, most women, not all, <clears throat> prefer uh, the um, delicacy of a silver needle. <clears throat> so let's see how do you like this. Thank you. Hope it's not too hot. Yeah, it has something burned mm. in it. Yeah. So I don't, for example, I don't smell, I don't taste uh, any uh, flower in it anymore. Yeah. 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 And if the previous one, when steeped longer, was looking like a <clears throat> apricot, this yeah. is kind of tasting like a dry apricot. But you know, when you 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 have this dry yeah. apricot that are dark. Yeah. 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 So more <clears throat> more on the fruity side. I'm lost, losing my voice here. 
structure, it is this level of additional complexity, actually, although we steep it very light. So what about putting more water in it and see how it changes when we go for even longer steep. And these are, um, it will continue changing, mm -hmm. yeah, and there are some people that say after a while the white tea uh, become worse, so uh, okay. you cannot age it forever. I personally have tried white tea up to 20, 25 years old uh, that were really fine. But I remember we had a, a Bimodan from 2003 mm -hmm. and uh, we stored it very long because we had no time to put the product online. And recently I tried it again and I didn't like it anymore. So oh, it, won't be, it won't be online. I prefer the 2007 instead, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel like the hay mm -hmm. factor remains? Mm -hmm. That's the first... Not so fresh. I mean, maybe later like, <coughs> straw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> straw. Straw and uh, it has some, uh, some hoody notes. It yeah. reminds me, uh, not overly wet hood. So it's not, I, I don't have, it doesn't taste moldy like you would mm -hmm. imagine a shoe pour, a ripe pour, mm -hmm. not at all. It doesn't have any of those notes, but uh, it is uh, like a major hood. Mm. Yeah, a ripe mm. hood. A ripe yeah. hood. <clears throat> so we will uh, wait uh, just a little bit more just to see what we can get <clears throat> out of these leaves. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, it's enough. Yeah. Let's pour this out and make some conclusion about. Uh, fresh and ripe white tea. In the color, it's, it's like a oolong or could be even a black tea actually. Mm -hmm. And now you can really tell from the color <clears throat> that is no more young, like if you compare it with the previous one, that it was greenish, this is uh, rather brown, actually. And now that it has this additional strength, it reminds me a little bit like uh, when you have a liquor <clears throat> after a dinner to digest, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would find it more appropriate. So the previous one for me is more sunny, summary yeah. yeah for morning like breakfast yeah. yeah and this one is later when it's dark after dinner yeah these dark thing? tones to it absolutely and the dark wood really comes yeah, out yeah comes out more. definitely mm. Mm. so what are you more Ooh. up for do you like more the dark or I quite like the stronger steep of this really? one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. After the first steep, I would have said the silver needle more. Okay. But I do this, like, you the like the strong steep. So you yeah. see also how much <clears throat> the steeping affect the taste. Yeah. And let's say white tea is also very good for beginners because you cannot do anything wrong. Mm. Like I, I could have, I mean, go in the other room and come back yeah. and we're having a call and it's not, uh, it's not bitter. Yeah. It is, of course, not that uh, explosive bouquet like many oolong have, mm -hmm. but it's still uh, you have these floral or fruity nor notes that are a little bit more subtle on the background and pleasant. Um, for me, sometimes when I have a very aromatic oolong, I might like it once or twice, but I cannot drink like a whole week long. Mm. Well, this could be a very, very good company in the office, for example, yeah. while I'm working, doing it on the side. And I also feel like the aftertaste is much more present in, in Intense, this Intense, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, to summarize, we have said we have uh, the fresh white tea and we have the aged white tea. The main difference, if you want, in the aspect is the color. An aged white tea always turn in the direction of brown colors, yeah, and you barely see some greenish note in it, while a fresh white tea is more on the green side. It doesn't have any brown in it as long as it's not already transitioning into aging. 
And concerning the taste, you would search um, taste like uh, we say the hay, yeah. uh, we say the bread yeast, um, white flour in the young one, and for the older one, we would say <clears throat> some wood. Wood. Some definitely apricot, wood. Dry. Apricot, so more, <clears throat> uh, more fruity than floral. Mm -hmm. And maybe even some uh, uh, liquor notes mm, in it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now that we've tried white tea, <clears throat> and in the meanwhile, you might have already noticed how we prepare white tea and what is important to do with white tea. But let's summarize and give you three tips to brew a uh, white tea to perfection, okay? So for me, and this goes a little bit uh, against the mainstream if you want. Okay. The thing thing, you want high temperature, okay? Most of the time in Europe and in America, you see white tea, you look on the bag and it's a 50, 60, 70 degrees C's. That's not enough to take out all the aroma of the white tea. And it doesn't turn bitter. We sleep mm. today with 100 degrees, so go for 90 degrees if you want even 100 and don't be afraid uh, of the temperature. That's the first one. The second thing is that since it is a subtlety, it's important to first smell it mm -hmm. because it, it brings you in the mood of the tea, basically. So what you do, you rinse all your tea with hot water, <clears throat> you put uh, the dry leaves inside, you shake it and you smell it. And these uh, you get already used into the taste, basically. Mm. Yeah, and this, <clears throat> this is also very important. And the, the third aspect is, have you seen, as, as have you seen today, uh, sometimes white tea comes in uh, compressed form, right. compressed form. This is something uh, they have begun, began, they began yeah. doing in uh, fooding in 2006, uh, oh, yeah, relatively very recent. recently, okay. because of poor. Uh -huh. uh, poor is compressed and they started doing white tea in the same way mm -hmm. because they followed this hype of poor yeah. and I mean they were right in the meanwhile white tea is very expensive in China but if you take a, a chunk of white tea of compressed white tea <clears throat> you want the first tea to be much longer like two mm -hmm. to three minutes because the leaves have to open up and it takes some time and then the second and the third tips you can do short like 30 seconds yeah so these are the three tips that uh, we give you for brewing your white tea. And now is your time for brewing it. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you have enjoyed uh, our uh, video, please give us a thumbs up. Very important for us. And if you haven't subscribed our channel yet, please go ahead and click that subscribe button because the more subscribers we get, the more video will come your way. Thank you very much. Enjoy your tea moment and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.